welcome back to our IB Biology video series. This is the fifth and final video in IB Biology Topic 1, Cell Biology, where we will be looking at the cell cycle, including mitosis, cytokinesis, interphase, cyclins, and dysregulation. As mentioned in our previous video, all cells need to divide. There are a repeating sequence of events which cells pass through in order to undergo this division. They are collectively known as the cell cycle, i.e. the sequence of events between one cell division and the next. The cell cycle consists of five key stages. These are mitosis, cytokinesis, gap 1, synthesis, and gap 2. It is worth noting that gap 1, synthesis, and gap 2 are often referred to under the umbrella term of interphase. But what do all these stages include? Well, let's go through them. One could theoretically start at any point in the cycle to explain the processes, but we will start with mitosis. Mitosis is the division of the nucleus of a cell into two genetically identical daughter nuclei. It involves four key substages, which, in order, are known as prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. You need to be able to describe, in detail, the events that occur in each of these substages. During prophase, chromosomes condense and become visible by supercoiling. The nuclear membrane breaks down. Spindle fibres, which are like string, grow from centrioles, which are structures found at the poles of the cell. During metaphase, spindle fibres attach to sites on each of the chromosomes called centromeres. It is important to appreciate that one spindle fibre from each pole is attached to each sister chromatid in every chromosome. The chromosomes move to the equator, i.e. the middle of the cell. During anaphase, the sister chromatids are pulled to the opposite poles of the cell. This causes them to separate. Once sister chromatids separate, they are known as chromosomes themselves, a little confusing. During telophase, the chromosomes reach the poles of the cell. The chromosomes then uncoil, and finally, the nuclear membrane reforms. Therefore, the result of mitosis is the generation of two genetically identical daughter nuclei. It is very important that you do not write genetically identical cells. This is a common mistake made by students. Given that you can describe the stages of mitosis, the IB expects you to be able to identify these on a micrograph and then calculate the mitotic index. This is the percentage of cells in a micrograph undergoing mitosis. You can find practice questions for this on our corresponding question page. Mitosis forms a fundamental part of many of the questions that appear in the exam. Therefore, it is worth taking the time to understand and memorize these stages. So, Mitosis generates two genetically identical nuclei within the cell. But how does a cell actually divide? Well, cue cytokinesis. Cytokinesis is the division of the cytoplasm to produce two daughter cells. It occurs slightly differently in animals and plants. So let's take a look at them both. In animals, a contractile ring of protein filament pulls the equator of the cell inwards. This forms a cleavage furrow. Eventually, this furrow separates the cytoplasm to form two cells. In plants, Golgi vesicles deliver materials for a new cell wall to the equator. A cell plate forms, eventually joining the existing cell wall. The vesicle membranes then fuse to form a new plasma membrane which eventually causes separation of the cytoplasm to form two cells. 
After a cell divides its nucleus by mitosis, then its cytoplasm by cytokinesis, the new daughter cells must then prepare to divide themselves. This is the role of interphase. Interphase is regarded as the active period of a cell's life to prepare for division. It includes metabolic reactions such as protein synthesis, DNA replication, centriole duplication, and an increase in chloroplasts and mitochondria. As discussed at the start of this video, the three key stages of interphase are GAP1, synthesis, and GAP2. During GAP1, the cell grows, synthesizes protein, and duplicates organelles. During synthesis, DNA replication occurs. During GAP2, the cell performs a DNA damage check, grows further, synthesizes further proteins, and prepares for cell division. Whilst uncommon, there is also an additional state called GAP0. This can occur after GAP1 and is a temporary or permanent state where a cell does not divide, like it's sleeping. As you may have guessed, the cell cycle is an incredibly important biological sequence, and so it must be carefully regulated. This is the role of cyclins, which are proteins that control the cell cycle to prevent unnecessary cell division, as this would be wasteful. Cyclins work by activating enzymes called cyclin-dependent kinases. These enzymes add phosphate groups to molecules, which in turn activates other proteins that control the cell cycle. The important concept to understand is that a cell can only progress through each stage of the cell cycle if the concentration of each cyclin is high enough. Cyclins were originally discovered during research of large sea urchin eggs. Scientists found a protein with a lifespan of 30 minutes, which coincided with the cell cycle. It was therefore determined that these proteins must regulate the cell cycle. Cyclins are great at regulating the cell cycle, but sometimes things go wrong. This is known as dysregulation, and it results in unregulated cell division, which forms masses of cells known as tumours. These tumours can then cause diseases, called cancers. For the IB Biology syllabus, you need to be able to understand why dysregulation can occur. To do this, we need to explore a few definitions. Proto-oncogenes are the genes that code for the proteins which regulate the cell cycle. Oncogenes are the mutated form of proto-oncogenes, which result in cancer. Mutagens are any factors that can result in the mutation of proto-oncogenes to form oncogenes. Commonly, mutagens include radiation and chemicals. When discussing mutagens, you may have heard the term carcinogens. These are simply mutagens that can cause cancer. Cigarettes are full of carcinogens and hence are heavily linked to an increased incidence of cancer. When describing tumours, there are two distinct categories, primary and secondary. Primary tumours are generally found in one location and can be benign tumours, which do not move around the body, or malignant tumours, which spread around the body via metastasis. Metastasis is when the cells detach from a malignant tumour and spread through the blood to another location. This leads to the formation of secondary tumours. Secondary tumours are therefore found in multiple locations. That's it. You now know everything you need to know about tumours for the IB Biology exam. We hope you enjoyed the fifth and final video in our IB Biology Topic 1 video series. Check out our notes, flashcards and questions on our website to reinforce your understanding from this video.